in terms of classification, we have a diagram called an evolutionary tree. In the one shown here, we can see seven different species, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And what an evolutionary tree can show us is how closely those species are related. So we know that A and B are very closely related, and F and G are very closely related. And we can also see that all seven species here all share a common ancestor. So why is classification important? Well, it can show us how closely species are related. That's an evolutionary relationship. But it's also important because it can show an ecological relationship too, where those organisms may, may live, for example. And classification is also important for conservation. You also need to know that there are difficulties with classification and it's not necessarily straightforward. Look at the duckbill platypus. It's got hair and it feeds on its mother's milk, so you would have thought we'd classify it as a mammal. Um, but it also lays eggs, unlike other mammals. So unusual characteristics make classification difficult. In fact, we do normally classify it as a mammal. Bacteria. They only reproduce asexually, so there's only one parent. Um, and as a result, you can't get them to breed with anything else. And that makes classification difficult. Now we've got hybrid animals like ligers, mules or wolfins. They are bred from two different species together and they're sterile. Because it's sort of two different species, which species do we put it in? We don't. So that's the problem with classification. And lastly we could look at dolphins. Now here it's just a case of them looking a bit like sharks, they live in water, but in fact they're not fish, they're mammals, so sometimes appearances can be deceiving. You also need to know the difference between artificial classification and natural classification. Artificial classification is where we base it just on one or two different characteristics, so that we can say that both puffins and herring gulls are both seabirds. Natural classification is based on evolution, so which genus, class, family, etc. do they actually belong to? So puffins and herrings are, are actually in different evolutionary families. Finally, you need to know a little bit about DNA sequencing, and that it has helped us become more certain of how closely organisms are related. So for example, we know that human chimps are really closely related because we've worked out through DNA sequencing that they share 98% of the same DNA.